Oh, shit. Today's video is a follow-up on the portable fish finder video from a few days ago. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll have a link in the description if you want to check that out. In that video, I did an unboxing, overview, and small water test on the Lucky Laker portable fish finder. For this video, I'll be going over my installation along with a full test and review after using it for a full day of fishing. Before we get started, if you find this video helpful, let me know by hitting that like button. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps us grow and keeps you from missing out on new videos. If you've already subscribed, welcome back. Originally, I had plans to mount this through a scupper hole so it would always be in position and ready to use by just plugging it in to start reading. I was excited about this idea because not only would it have been a super clean and out of sight install, it would have kept the transducer safe in the water. Unfortunately, I found out while test footing the transducer, it's just a hair too large to fit in the scupper channel under the kayak. After playing around with some alternative ideas, I came up with one that works really well. It keeps it out of harm's way, gives you full control when to deploy it, and it's still a very clean install. The basic idea works like an anchor trolley system. Using some track mounted accessories and a few zip ties, I was able to run the line down the side of the kayak under the foot pedal track ending at the front track. Back by the seat, the transducer cable is tied off to a track mounted cleat and the extra cabling is managed under the seat. The cabling under the seat is zip tied together while leaving enough of the plug end to route out from the seat to next to me near the handle of the kayak. While fishing, I kept the actual fish finder tethered to my PFD for quick and easy access whenever I wanted it. To deploy the transducer, and this is my favorite part, you only need to unwrap the cord from the cleat and the weight of the transducer will pull itself into the water. Once it's deployed, you tie off the remaining cable back onto the cleat. With the transducer deployed, you just grab the plug end of the cable near the kayak handle and plug it into the fish finder, and you're all set. When I was ready to move to a new location, or I needed to bring the transducer back out of the water, I only had to pull it back up and out of the water and tie it off to the cleat again for storage. This worked so much better than I expected. In fact, since the cable was tied off to the cleat, I was able to keep the transducer deployed most of the day. It didn't get in the way when paddling or fishing, and the tied off cable kept it right next to the kayak. It honestly didn't give me any issues. This is working great, and I can easily recommend this as an option if you're looking to mount it in a similar setup. If you've watched this far to find out if this fish finder actually works, I'm happy to report that it does. The depth readings were accurate, and I was able to identify underwater structure and even find fish. The sonar resolution is not as good as more expensive units with a better transducer, but for a sub $100 sonar based unit, it works as advertised. There were a few quirks I'll go over, but overall, I was very pleased with this purchase. The first place I wanted to test the fish finder was at a rock wall I passed a few times while fishing. I've been curious to know how deep it was around here and if there was anything under the water off the wall of interest. I paddled up to the area and the first thing I noticed was there was a very steep slope coming off the wall. It went from roughly 5 feet deep at the base of the wall to about 12 feet deep not far out from it. I also saw the sonar light up with some kind of underwater structure when I went by a very specific spot on the wall. I mentally noted that area and quickly repositioned myself to try and fish it. I did a few casts to that spot and sure enough, I pulled up fish. I was able to repeat this process a few times throughout the day. I noticed there was a very deep channel along the bank I commonly fish at, and other areas of the lake were much more shallow than I expected. Another surprising data point that the fish finder provided me was the water temperature. It was reaching 90 degrees in some spots, and I clearly noticed whenever it dropped to around 85 to 87 degrees in the shade, I noticed more fish. I didn't get a chance to try it in the more open water as the conditions that day just didn't allow it, but I'm sure this would work at finding crappie in deeper water. All in all, the mounting solution I came up with worked flawlessly, and the fish finder provided all the relevant data I could ask for. As far as the earlier mentioned quirks, I would not take much stock in the fish icons and alarms. Often, it considered underwater plants as small fish, and when the fish alarm was turned on, it was going off like crazy. If you wanted to use the fish alarm, which I still think has value, make sure to at least set the limit to medium and large fish. That way, plants are not caught up in the alarm as small fish. I'm really excited to get back out there and use this some more. It was just what I was looking for in a portable fish finder for the kayak, and I'm happy to see it actually worked. 
If you guys found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe so I see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.